Today we're here to celebrate what we're calling a groundbreaking, uh, but which as you can see, especially if you look to the south, is um, really something um, halfway between a groundbreaking and a ribbon cutting. But that's a good thing because we're spared the problem of stomping around in the mud, but we can still get a feel for what will be the transition from an under underdeveloped piece of land, half of which has been closed to the public for a century, to a magnificent new waterfront park. Uh, it's not every day that we get to be part of a successful effort that truly is a collaboration of every sector of our society. Our partners in this venture come from all levels of government, the private sector and the nonprofit community, and equally importantly, the many residents who supported this effort and literally helped design the park. Everyone played a cr critically important role, and we would not be here today if anyone had backed away. Um, so what I'd really like to do is to recognize and thank all of you who helped make this happen. This is always dangerous, and I'm sure I'll leave someone out, and I have to pick an order in which to do this, but I'll do my best. First, I'd like to start with our biggest partner, County Executive Andy Spano and his staff. In many ways, it is Andy's vision for a continuous walk along the entire Hudson River in Westchester that brings us here today. And we believe this park will be the centerpiece of that vision. I'd especially like to thank Andy's man in Ferrytown, Anthony Zeno, who spent countless hours on the ground actually making this happen. At the same time, I want to thank our county legislator, Lo Lois Bronze, who could be here today, who is always there to make sure <coughs> we move smooth smoothly through the county legislature. Next, I'd like to thank Mrs. Catherine Davis, our longtime resident and friend, whose generosity is simply unprecedented. It is impossible to adequately describe our appreciation for her. Next on my list is Scenic Hudson, especially Ned Sullivan, Steve Rosenberg, who among other things continually nudged this process along, as he knows, and Rita Shaheen, who was an integral part of the planning and design process. Not only did Scenic Hudson provide generous support, but they also added their incredible expertise and experience to help make this a far better project. Next, I'd like to thank our Congresswoman Nita Lowy, who provided the first support we received for this project and by which enabling us to reconstruct and sta stabilize the seawall to our south actually made the rest of what we're doing here possible. Thank you. <laughs> now the state of New York has also been part of this pro process um, and while you don't see it here today on this portion of the pro park, the commitment the state has made will enable us to complete the upland portion and tie all of this together with the rest of the park on the waterfront. I'd like to thank Barbara Fradiani, who's here today, to representing DEC Commissioner Pete Granis. Next, we'll move to the private sector. I want to thank Joe Cotter and his organization, who, while we haven't always agreed on every detail of this project, had the vision to appreci and appreciated the importance of what we're doing here for all the residents of Tarrytown and for the region. It wasn't just about his development, and I want to thank him for understanding that. If you ever want to have a private developer as a partner, I definitely recommend Joe. And finally, and this is a case of last but definitely not least, I want to thank all the Tarrytowners, and I mean this in the broadest possible way, who made this possible. This project actually first started out in the mid-90s when Eileen Pillow was mayor, and there are a few people here who have been here since then who have been a part of this project since that time. Those people are our Planning Board Chairman Stan Freelander, Planning Board Member Ron Tedesco, Trustee and Deputy Mayor Tom Bajer, who couldn't make it here today. Our Attorney Jeff Shimada and Kathy Defemia, who has served as the primary staff assistant to both our planning board and our village administrator. They put in many hours waiting to see this happen. I'd also like to thank my board of trustees, as well as the past board members who have always supported this project. Here today with us are trustees Bobby Hoyt. I don't see Tom Butler unless he arrived. Uh, Mary McGee and also Doug Zolo, who I don't think made it as well. Um, I'd also like to thank former Mayor Paul Janus, who's in the back there somewhere, uh, who played a critical role in the early stages of the project. And I want to thank Village Engineer Mike McGarvey, who makes sure that the work gets done and that it gets done right. Lastly, there are three people who deserve a special thanks, as each, in the very different ways, have not only spent endless time and energy, but whose work literally made this project possible. 
So a very special thanks goes to our Waterfront Advisory Committee Chair, Linda Bertel, former Administrator Steve McKay, and current Administrator Mike Brown. <coughs> Without them, we truly could not be here today. And with that, I'll turn the mic over to County Executive Andy Spano. Andy has a few words to say. Thank you, Mayor. I do a lot of these. Uh, I'm always excited when I come down to the river and it's one more mile or one more half mile. We now have 31 miles out of the 51 miles. It's an incredible feat. And all of our partners have been incredible <laughs> in this process. Uh, there, isn't, there isn't one town along the, along the river that hasn't participated openly in the whole process. And that includes the private developers, the federal government, and everyone else. This is, uh, this is really not my vision. Uh, it was my eyesight. I, uh, I got it from Marty Ginsburg. Marty talked to me about it one year, and uh, I had a napkin on, on my table. It was a luncheon. And I drew the line up the side as he described it. I gave it to my planning department. I said, can you do this? They said, yes. And then they've worked with each town, each developer, and everyone to, to make it happen. And it's happening. It will, I don't know when it will be finished, but it will be finished. And, and this, this is a standout part of the entire project. Uh, it won't all look like this. It won't all be parks, because we want people to come down to the river for different reasons. We want to have an eclectic ambiance so that they can, they can have different experiences as they come up and enjoy the river and maybe go into all the towns and see the towns and walk through the towns. And I think that would be fantastic. So I would just want to congratulate everyone that's been involved uh, and just tell you how much I enjoy this. Thank you. Uh, Congressman, Congresswoman. Thank you. Well, first of all, I want to thank all the people that Drew thanked. And I won't take my couple of minutes to thank you again, but this is such a great partnership. And I can't tell you how excited I am to be here. Now, not everyone, Catherine, grew up when we all grew up. And I remember that the river, whether it was the Hudson River or the East River, was the place that they put factories, plants, and no one ever went down to these rivers and appreciated them. It was really the outcast. And all the people who contributed to this project, like you, had the vision to understand what our waterfronts could do for us. You know, whether uh, we have an asphalt plant as we had here or in other parts of the river and the East River, uh, there were power ge uh, generators and all these activities vied for space on the waterfront. So even as they delivered economic benefits, their presence certainly didn't contribute to our communities enjoying the beauty of this waterfront. And what a day it is today. The no problem. Joe, Joe, Andy, if you Joe see oil, just close your eyes. Joe's touching it over here, not over here. Andy, we just needed the property. Speak to Steve. They took it without any restrictions.